Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel Bioinformatics Review. Today we are going to perform self-organizing maps in MATLAB. But before we begin, I would like to tell you about our website Bioinformatics Review where you can find several multiple articles on bioinformatics and you can even send your suggestions to us to the for the topics uh, for which you want articles or videos at info at the rate bioinformaticsreview.com and muniba at the rate bioinformaticsreview.com so let's begin with our self-organizing maps clustering in matlab so um, let me first show you our input data so here you see this is an excel sheet where uh, you can see these values i have removed the labels because uh, i we are actually inputting our own data using command line <laughs> so that's why i have removed all the uh, labels and these things but if you want you can uh, keep them and you can actually import data uh, from your uh, csv file but we are not doing it with uh, with uh, csv file we are just inputting our data using command line so let me show you there are around 45 columns and sorry 45 rows and 53 columns uh maybe 54 i i don't actually remember so those so this is the uh complete yeah there are 53 columns so you can see these values are actually pre-processed and normalized so uh, we are directly inputting these values into the uh into our script and let's see how we can do that so let's get back to our script here you see there is a code and first we have put clear command that is to um, to clear our workspace whether we have whether we could have uh, previous variables here so we don't want that then this rng default it's actually to for uh, reproducibility of results for example if you are rerunning this script then it will use any random seed again and then you will get different output so it's better to use the same seed every time and next thing we have defined predictors so let's see what our predictors predictors are like features or uh, what are your uh, calculated values right so uh, if you are using iris data you are just you are putting like load iris and then it will load the iris data but it's actually uh, iris data is a csv file uh, that consists of four columns and uh, i think no sorry five columns where uh, there are um, values for petal width uh, sepal width petal length and sepal length and the fifth column is the um is the variety right so here how we uh, define our own predictors in uh, matlab for self-organizing maps so here how we, here is how we do it predictors uh, is equal to we are putting uh, in the square brackets and let's see we have here our first row we are going to copy this and then you paste this here okay so after you uh, paste one line you have to put a semicolon okay so and so on you you just uh, copying and pasting these values here uh, uh, using semicolon as a delimiter for these uh, values okay so yes and the another thing which is important that i have kept features in columns right not in rows so these variables or features they are actually in columns this is variable one two three four five six so and so forth okay so let's get back to our script here when you are finished then close the square bracket and put a semicolon okay now uh, we are using x equals to predictors just for the sake of ease right i don't want to write predictors multiple times so i'm using assigning another variable to it that is x now let's create a self-organizing map here we are uh, we have to define dimensions for it uh, for example that how many neurons you want to assign to your uh, data set so basically um, there is 10 by 10 dimension that is you always square this for example 10 by 10 it's 100 so there will be 100 neurons but i actually have very less data so it's around 45 rows and 50 columns so therefore i have assigned only uh, seven 
to 7 um, but it's actually more there will be 49 you can use 6 by 6 also but we'll just let's keep it to 7 here and another thing that you can do is you don't have to put these values uh, same right they can they can be different for example you can put it here 2 5 whatever you want okay just remember the number of neurons it is going to assign to uh, your data so here there will be 49 neurons okay next thing is we are as uh, we are defining the self-organizing map to a variable net here we uh, define the dimensions for dimension one we give the dimensions dimension one and dimension two and the next thing is how many times you are going to train your data so here i'm actually using 500 default is 200 but i will be using 500 uh, this will actually um, uh, it's not like that uh, how many times you train you will get better it actually depends on the data so we will actually get back to it once we get to the output analysis part so next thing is let's train the network um just uh, simply put this command there are two variables net and tr that is going to train our data that is x here predictors okay next thing is we are going to test the network and here uh, it's like the you can visualize it it's okay but yeah okay let's visualize this visualize the network and here there are different plots that you can but we are actually going to use the gui for uh, to obtain these plots okay so uh, the last section is fetch data points it is actually for uh, to if you want to get what input values are actually present in the map i will uh, explain this once we get all the output so after this let's save this file and run it here and let's see what do we get um, it won't take much time yeah it will be finished soon okay yeah so it's actually training yeah okay it's done and then you get six different training plots okay so this is our self-organizing map here you can see there are 45 input values and then you, there it is 49 neurons that are assigned and output is 49 so let's get back to our plots yeah six different plots this is the SOM topology it actually tells you how your neurons are uh, connected to each other for example we start from bottom left uh, neuron one two three four five six seven to seven by seven and then we move to the next row from left side again so it will be neuron 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and so on and so forth okay so this is our SOM topology now you can look at some neighbor connections for example how these neurons are interconnected so this one is connected to this one this one and this one okay so these are the just simple neighbor connections plot now this is a neighbor distances okay you can actually since the data is really less that i'm using here but if you have a very you know large data set so you can actually see these uh, bright colors they uh, they will be defining different cl clusters in this uh, plot so for example if uh, for example there is a yellow line from here to here so it will be defining a cluster here and the color the brighter the color is there it, the more similar these two neurons are each other right so for example you see here they are quite similar but the darker color shows the dissimilarity the highest dissimilarity between for example this one and this one they are highly dissimilar okay but this one is done this is highly similar so this is for neighbor weight distances next one is some input planes so uh, input planes it's like you will get uh, different uh, mm, you will get heat maps kind of heat maps or u metrics you can say for uh, different variables here so as you can see 
here there are let's expand it a bit okay so there are 45 inputs the plot showing the darker color it's like it's quite dissimilar right so on the basis of this map you can actually rule out your variables so it's uh, for example here the brighter color the, the variable that is showing brighter colors that is it, it is showing more similarity to the uh, to the um, to the data okay and let's see the form sample hits okay so you can see here there are different uh, neurons and there are different values for example there is three one two here just two is three so there that means that there are three variables or there are three inputs that are clustered together and here is one and you can see that this neuron is connected to this and the to this one and this one is to this one so you can actually relate that they are similar to each other right the, as you can see there is the size of this um this filled neuron it's somewhere smaller somewhere it's, uh, it's completely filled so it's, it's on the depending on the size of the data points it contains okay so uh, let's quickly get to the last plot that is some weight positions so you see in this uh, these are the data points so you actually want this graph uh, that is less entangled and it is covering to the uh, the covering almost all of these data points okay so so for that you can actually um, increase the number of epochs and see how how it goes okay so let's move let's uh, get back to our some sample hits map yes but how will you know like for example there are you know there are three data points there are two there is there is one so how will you know which data points i mean what are the actually input values from your data which variable is contributing or which input is contributing to uh, this to uh, this cluster and yes and the other thing is you can see that it will make a bit of a cluster here a cluster here a cluster here and another cluster that is here so you can see or you can analyze your uh, data raw data that how it is interlinked to each other why it is showing the similarity okay so let's let's see what are the actual input values in these neurons so for this you need this command where you convert vector to indices for this let's close it for now yeah you actually convert vector to indices of your data okay and uh, of your trained data okay so for this you first find the input neuron mapping of first neuron here i have put one so it is first neuron and and then finally you find the uh, neuron one input indices okay if you want for you know for example fifth neuron you can write five here five here and then same five here and five here but i actually want to see for the first neuron as it contains three data points so let's see what these uh, data points actually point to in our raw data okay so let's first run this command here it is still showing you the uh, input indices now sorry input vector input values now here you paste it here and then get the yes so first it is minus 0 0.202 let's get back to our data let's find this value and yes since there are 
four places after a decimal so the fourth place it is actually the rounded off value so since i had uh, you know multiple values uh, after a decimal so it is rounded off rounded off at fourth value so we are going to delete this and then find this value like for example here 0.28019 so since there is 9 it is rounded off to 2 so you can say that it's the first variable and the sixth row value if you have any kind of labels for them you can uh, say that this uh, label it's actually present in your first neuron and it is clustering with the another value here let's see where this value is so again delete the full value and yes here three six five six no it's actually not this one because there is three six five one okay so here is two so it's not rounded off let's move on to the yes it's three six five one okay so you can see that this one and this one they are actually similar to each other and they are clustered together and let's see our third value mm, no not this one okay yes so these three uh, these three um, these three data points they are actually similar to each other right you can say that so for this variable these three uh, values these three values or whatever uh, label you are using uh, they are actually similar to each other and then you can always do that for each neuron uh, here you can say that this one is also similar to this this one is also similar to this okay so that's how you uh, map different input values to your raw data from sample some hits so um, that's all for our tutorial let us let me know uh, how do you like this tutorial and what other kind of tutorials you want to see uh, just leave the suggestions in the comments below and if you have any kind of queries so you can email us uh, at munibar at bioinformaticsreview.com and for all updates you can always follow us on twitter telegram facebook we are always uh, posting updates on these accounts and subscribe to our youtube channel we will be meeting soon with the another tutorial